Hi everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to dual boot Pop! OS with Windows 10. Pop! OS is a very popular Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 24 and developed by System76, which produces also, by the way, laptops and desktops. So without further ado, let's see how we can dual boot Windows 10 with Pop! OS. So here we go, let's go ahead and start the process of installing Pop! OS alongside Windows 10. And the first thing we need to do is to go to the Pop! OS website, which I already prepared here. Let me pull it over here. And the uh, address here is pop.system76.com. As you probably already know, System76 produces also hardware. And Pop! OS is the operating system shipping with these laptops. So if you want, you can, of course, read through the website. It's really nicely done. And when you're ready, you can go to the download button here, whether here or on the button. Let's click this one right here. And you can choose the ISO you want to download. So basically, we have a normal ISO. And we have an ISO with NVIDIA drivers already installed. So, of course, this is up to the machine you have, so download accordingly. Once you downloaded the ISO, you can burn it to a stick via Balena Hatcher, for example, or if you are on Windows, you can do it also with Rufus. And once you have done that, you can boot your machine from the USB stick. And when you boot the machine from USB stick, you will be greeted by this screen here, which is the Pop! OS installer. So let's go ahead and hit enter to start the installer. It's going to take a moment to boot up. And there you go, we are in the desktop and the welcome screen will appear shortly. There you go. Well, the first thing, let me actually change the display resolution here by going to choose 1080p and the refresh rate is 60 Hz and click apply and keep the changes. There you go. Now, the next step is to make sure that you have an internet connection. So you can go up here to the network icon. In my case, it's wired, so it's already there. If you have Wi-Fi, you should be able to see your Wi-Fi adapter here. You can choose the network, enter the password, and you will be connected to the internet as well. So let's proceed with the installation by clicking here the language and click select. Now, select the variation of the language. In my case, that's fine. So I just click select and I can choose now my keyboard layout, which is in my case, the Swiss keyboard. And the layout is this one right here and click select again. Now, here we can choose how we want to install Pop! OS. So the first option here, clean install, erase everything and install a fresh copy. We don't want to do that. Otherwise, we lose the Windows installation and then custom advanced. So let's go for this and click custom advanced and click again custom. It's going to take a moment here to continue. There you go. And this is the overview of how the disk is partitioned. Now, word of caution here, make sure always when you try dual booting, make a backup of your Windows data because the process should be safe, but you never know if something goes wrong, you have to have a backup of your data. So as you can see here, this is how the disk is partitioned in Windows. We have SDA1, which is the first partition here. It's around 100 megabytes, and this is our EFI partition formatted with the FAT32 file system. We have the second partition here, which is SDA2. This is normally the Microsoft reserved partition. And then we have the NTFS partition, which is normally the Windows installation is where Windows is installed, basically. And we have also a last partition here, which is the recovery partition at the end of the disk. Now, what we need to do here, we need to make space so that we can install Pop! OS. So to do this, we need to go to modify partitions. But before we do that, let's pay attention here because it's very important. Select which partitions to use across all drives. Selecting format will erase all data on the selected partition. You must at least select a root partition plus a boot partition that is at least 500 megabytes and on a GPT disk. It is also recommended to select a swap partition. The part that is very important here is this one. The boot EFI partition is at least 500 megabytes. Now, it is a GPT disk because it's a UFI system, but the partition that we have here in Windows, which was created by the Windows installation, the EFI partition, it's not 500 megabytes, it's 100 megabytes. So we cannot actually use this partition as an EFI partition for Pop! OS. Now, there are ways on how we can change this partitioning scheme, but I have seen in some situations changing the partitioning scheme might actually render the Windows installation unbootable. So to avoid any potential risk here, I'm going to go with the safest option, which is to create space for Pop! OS, and in that space create a separate EFI partition for Pop! OS, a swap partition and a root partition, and then having the ability to boot into one of the systems from the BIOS. 
So let's go ahead and modify the partitions by click Modify Partitions. And let me center the window here. And this is the partition where Windows is installed. So we want to make space for Pop! OS here. So what we do, we're just going to right click on the partition and then click Resize Move. Now we need to define the new size of the Windows partition. Let's say we want to make it around 65 gigabytes. So we just drag the slider here so until around 65. And then I'm just going to hit Resize Move. And to make the change permanent, I'm just going to click the check mark here and then click Apply. This is going to take a moment. There you go. And we can click Close. So we have here the resized Windows partition and our new empty space for Pop! OS. So I'm going to create first the EFI partition for Pop! OS here. So let's right click on the partition and click New. I'm going to type in, in the size here 512. This is going to be 512 megabytes of space for the EFI partition. I'm going to change the file system type here to FAT32. And I'm going to change the partition name here to EFI. And then I'm going to click Add. So we have here our EFI partition of 512 megabytes and it's a FAT32 file system. And let's go ahead and create our swap partition. So let's right click on the unallocated space and click New. And I want to do the swap partition here. So this machine has 4 gigabytes of RAM and it should be enough to have actually 4 gigabytes of swap. I'm going to type it in here. It's easier, 4000. Then I'm going to call the partition name here swap. And the file system is going to be Linux swap. And then I'm going to click add. Now, last but not least, I'm going to right click again on the unallocated space because we need to create the root partition. And I'm going to accept the defaults here. I'm just going to call this partition root. And the file system type for me is fine. So I'm just going to click add. So those changes will be done when we click the check mark here. So let's go ahead and do that and click apply. It's going to take a moment here to partition the disk, and there you go. And now we can click Close. Now let's close Gparted here and go back to the main installer. And it's going to take a moment here to refresh the image, and there you go. Now we have here our new EFI partition, the swap partition, and the root partition. Now we need to define the partitions so that the installer can install the system. So let's go ahead and start with the EFI partition for Pop! OS. So I'm going to click here the yellow one, which is the one we just created, and click Use Partition. Now I'm going to click Format because I just want to format it once. It's used as a boot partition, which is fine, and the file system is FAT32. So that's good. We can move on to the Swap Partition, and let's click on the red partition here. Click Use Partition, and Use as Swap is fine, and we can click out of the window here, and this is done. Now we need to do the same for the root partition, so let's click the green partition here and click Use Partition. I will format it as a EXT4 file system type, which is defined here, and it's used as a root partition. So that's going to be it. And you can see now the button Erase and Install is available, so that means we can go ahead and install the system. So let's do this by clicking Erase and Install. And it's going to take some time now to perform the installation, so I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the installation is now finished and it was actually fairly quick. So let's go ahead and restart the device. So let's click Restart Device. Now we want to be able to boot the system from the BIOS. So every computer has its own key or where you can boot with the BIOS. In my case here, because it's a VM, it's an escape key. And your BIOS will look, of course, different, but you will have to look for the boot option. In my case here is the boot manager. So I'm just going to click this. And you can see here I can boot into Pop! OS or into the Windows Boot Manager. So this is how you can basically do a boot Pop! OS with Windows 10. So let's go ahead and boot Pop! OS. And it's gonna take a moment to do that. And there you go. So we are here on the welcome screen and let's go through it very quickly. So let's click next. And we can choose the keyboard. In my case, it's already selected, which is correct. So I can click next. Location services, I will leave the default. And I will change here the time zone to the city closest to me, which is Zurich, and click Next. I will skip online accounts. I don't need this right now. And I will create here my account. So I'll type in my name here, and I'll choose my username, and click Next. Select my password, and retype it, and click Next again. Start using Pop! OS. This is all done. So let's click the button here and it's going to reboot back into the desktop. So let me first adjust the screen resolution one more time. So I'll go down here, select 1080p and 60 hertz, and click Apply, and keep the changes. There you go. 
So we are here in Pop OS. So I really like Pop OS because it's really streamlined. It has a very, very polished version of GNOME. And so let's have a look what's installed by default. Let's click on activities here and open up the programs. So as you can see, we don't have a lot installed here, which is really nice because it gives you a very light system to work with. So we just have a few programs here. We have already LibreOffice installed by default, which is a nice touch. We have the pop shop. We have here the system utilities, which includes only disk usage, analysis, and some other tools. We have also the terminal, the text editor, and some utilities for the system, but that's about it. There is not much else installed here. So let's open up the terminal and let me increase the font size here a little bit and also the window. And let's type in uname-r and hit enter. So this is kernel 5.4.0. This is the same kernel of Ubuntu 24 on which Pop! OS is based, of course. But it has its own spin on it, and this version of GNOME from Pop! OS is really nice. Of course, it's a matter of personal preference, but when I work on Pop! OS with this GNOME interface, I really feel it's very slick and very fast. Of course, as I said, this is Ubuntu based, so we can always use sudo apt update, enter the password to check for updates for the system. There you go, there are already some packages that we can install, so let's do that. Let's pull up update and replace update with upgrade, and hit enter and accept the defaults here. It's gonna take a moment here to update. In the meantime, we can have a look on what we have here again. We have Firefox installed as a default browser here. We have Geary, which is the default email application. It's a very nice application. It has, in my opinion, a very nice design. We have the GNOME calendar, contacts, and of course, we have also the file manager here with the Pop! OS theme, which has also very nice colors. Now, let's not forget one of the nice features of Pop! OS, which was introduced already in the last version, is the possibility here to switch between desktop windows and tiling windows by going to this button here and enable tile windows. Let's try that. Let's open up actually another window. Let's open up Firefox. And let's go here on this button and click on tile windows. So you can see now it works basically like a window manager. We can also select different gaps here if we increase the gaps or decrease the gaps. Very nice feature as well. And here we have some of the shortcuts, some of the key bindings, and we can also click here. It will open a new window with all the key bindings available in this mode. So if you're working a lot on development, this mode in Pop! OS is really helpful and it's really nicely implemented. I really like this. So let's close this with SuperQ. Actually, let's go back to desktop mode here and we can close these windows up. And the updates are also done. Now, another thing is let's open up the pop shop. So let's go here and open the pop shop. And as you can see, it launches very fast. It's divided in categories. So, for example, let's go ahead and see audio and let's search for Spotify. And here we have Spotify. So let's click this. And this is also very nice in Pop! OS. They give you the choice whether you want to use the Debian package, which is a binary, or you want to install the Flatpak. So it's really up to you which one you prefer to use. So this is how we can dual boot Pop! OS with Windows 10. I really like Pop! OS. It's one of my favorite distributions based on Ubuntu 24. It's more geared, of course, to developers or people who love the GNOME desktop environment. It's a very nice implementation of GNOME, especially having the possibility also to use it almost as a window manager. If you try installing Pop! OS dual booting with Windows 10, let me know in the comments below how it works for you and what do you think about Pop! OS. So there you go. This is one way how you can dual boot Pop! OS with Windows 10. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, as always you can visit our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.